So this is my presentation of The Doors by Haley Palamak. So, um, oops. So The Doors were an American rock band formed in Los Angeles in 1965. The band consisted of vocalist Jim Morrison, keyboardist Ray Manzarek, guitarist Robbie Krieger, and drummer John Densmore. They were among one of the most controversial and influential rock acts of the 1960s, mostly because of Morrison's lyrics and his erotic stage persona and the group was wildly regarded as representative of the Eric's counterculture. So the Eric's counterculture was an anti-establishment cultural phenomenon that developed throughout much of the Western world between the mid-1960s and mid-1970s. The band took its name from the title of Aldous Huxley's book, The Doors of Perception. The Doors signed with Electra Records and released eight albums in five years, some of which are considered the greatest of all time, including The Doors of 1967, Strain Days 1967, and L.A. Woman 1971. And by 1972, The Doors had sold over 4 million albums domestically and nearly 8 million singles. Their contribution was they were known for their anti-conformist behavior and their provocative and anti-conservative lyrics, usually with very explicit sexual references. The Doors successfully straddled two worlds made up of rock and roll in the late 1960s. They were more influenced by jazz and folk music. It was a hard-edged band. They were considered musical loners. The Doors played what it wanted to play and sang the words it felt should be sung at a time when popular bands were more conservative. The Doors captured American and international audiences with its honest music and dodged music and ship. The band blended a style of ragged hair and unconventional clothing along with blues-influenced sound. Their influence was when Jim Morrison influenced many artists such as Lana Del Rey, The Strokes, The Cure. Lana Del Rey and The Strokes both spoke on how Jim Morrison and The Doors were both very influential on their music. Soundgarden's 1996 hit single, Waiting for the Sun, was the band's way of paying tribute to The Doors' legacy, whose original version in 1970 was taken from their fifth album, Morrison Hotel. After Iggy Pop saw The Doors perform in 1967, Iggy was stunned by the onstage antics of Jim Morrison and continued to admire him during his career. In 1993, The Doors were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Pearl Jam vocalist Eddie Vedder filled in for the late Jim Morrison and joined remaining band members Robbie Krieger, Ray Manzarek, and John Densmore. While other bands like the Beatles, who were seen as clean and respectable, were trying to prepare their audience for a world of hope and peace, the Doors, meanwhile, were making music for a ravenous and murderous time. The Jim Morrison died while staying in Paris in 1971 due to uncer uncertain circumstances. His official death was listed as heart failure and no aut autopsy was performed. His death was two years to the day of the Rolling Stone of the death of the Rolling Stones guitarist Brian Jones, and approximately nine months after the deaths of Hemi Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin, all of whom died at the age of 27, only adding to the cultural phenomenon of the 27 Club. The remaining Doors members went to London in order to recruit a new lead singer, as they were having trouble finding someone in the U.S. The Butts band was formed in 1973 and released an album during the same year. They eventually broke up and went their separate ways in 1978 after their second album. Uh, hang on, I have videos. Um, oh no. Oh no. What do I do? <laughs> uh oh, that's not on YouTube anymore. <laughs> So we'll just take a look at this one instead. the conclusion I just have some facts about the doors so um, 
Jim Morrison uh, was one of the first musicians to ever be arrested on stage in 1967 for too many obscenities and indecency on stage. The Doors' self-titled album was recorded in six days. <laughs> and according to the RIAA, they sold 33 million certified units in the U.S. Um, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1993. And... Electra Records, their label, purchased the first rock billboard in history. So, in conclusion, The Doors were one of the most controversial groups during the 60s, but one of the most influential groups as well. They created a new genre of music and didn't follow the more common music during their generation. They sang about what they wanted to sing about, and they sang it how they wanted to sing it. Their music and lyrics were genuine and attentive to the events occurring in the world during their time, which could be applied to us today. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>